So as you guys know, if you've watched the channel for the last few months or so, I've gotten really deep into the home lab stuff. And while I have tried and I think I've succeeded in not flooding the channel with home lab content, I do plan to make some home lab stuff and put it on the channel just because that's what I'm kind of interested in at the moment. And that's what this channel is, is me talking about stuff that I'm interested in. So while I'm trying not to flood it, you guys can expect some things. But what I wanted to do today was talk about one of the favorite things I've found to self-host, which I really didn't think that I'd like because I didn't think I needed it, right? It has so many features. It's kind of like Emacs, but it has so many features that I just have no interest in using. I didn't think I needed it. And that's Nextcloud. Now, I've heard amazing things about Nextcloud over the years. Everyone who installs Nextcloud is just amazed at it. And like, oh my God, this is an open source piece of software. It does all these really cool things. And it's just like the praise is glowing from everyone who's ever used it. It's kind of off-putting to, to ask me because there's no way that this type of thing is that good. You know what I mean? How, how could it possibly be so good that it blows everyone's mind? But but I decided because I'm into the home lab stuff, and if you're into home lab stuff, you kind of have to use Nextcloud. It's kind of in the contract. You know, I, I decided to give it a try. And it is... Well, it's that good. It's really, really good. And that's what I want to talk about today. So I'm not going, this is not a uh, tutorial on how to do Nextcloud, how to install Nextcloud. I may cover a little bit of that. I don't know. But basically what I want to do today is talk about my first couple months of using Nextcloud, some of the things that I use it for, some of the things that I don't use it for, why I think that it's really good to, no matter what you do use it for, uh, and why I think that you guys should try it if you have the chance. So First off, let's get it out of the way. You don't have to have a home lab to use Nextcloud. You can host this thing on your computer if you want to. You could host it in a VM, you could host it, you know, directly on your local machine, whatever you want. And you could then, if you know enough about networking, you can expose that to the world if you wanted to, or you can just use it locally, whatever you want to do. There are so many different ways of using Nextcloud. It does not require you to go out and buy a dedicated machine to run Nextcloud. Now, if you have the means to do so, by all means, do that, uh, but you don't have to. So just to get that out of the way, I don't want to put this out there like you have to go spend uh, you know hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars to use Nextcloud. That's absolutely not the case. You can also, if you don't want to host it locally, you can go get a like a Linode or whatever they, they're calling it these days and you know it, spend five dollars a month, run Nextcloud on that. It work perfectly fine and then you don't even have to worry about having your own hardware to do it so it's very easy to find ways of hosting nextcloud and it's actually fairly easy to install yes you do have to have some docker knowledge but most of the documentation which leads you towards installing the docker is fairly straightforward uh, if you guys are interested in me doing a tutorial on how to install nextcloud you can't you just leave a comment in the comment section below but if you don't want to wait for that you can search on youtube for how to install docker and there are dozens of tutorials all of them or at least most of them fairly good so you don't have to wait for me to do it once you have it installed, you, you get this interface that you're going to be seeing here in the B-roll. And this is the my, my biggest complaint about Nextcloud is the UI is bad. Like, at least out of the box, it is bad. Like, it doesn't look good. Like, like I, I don't understand. I mean, I understand the whole cloud thing, but I don't know. It just doesn't feel very well designed to me. Now, this was my biggest turnoff for Nextcloud for years. Like I, I had seen it used by other people and they always showed this UI and I was like, eh, that doesn't look very good. Now I'm, I'm very visual when it comes to this kind of stuff. I like my applications to have good looking UIs and that's one of the reasons why I've kind of avoided Nextcloud beyond the whole, it has a whole bunch of features I don't think I need. It also doesn't have a very good UI. But once I decided to actually use it, First off, you can change the UI somewhat. You can put in a different theme, a different wallpaper, whatever you want. But also, you don't use this web, web UI very often. At least I don't. Like, you can if you want to. But for the most part, I use the desktop client on my desktop. And then I use the client on my phone uh, to do things. And the UI of both of those things is at least somewhat better, at least on the phone. On the the on the desktop it has some issues like it won't stay open if it's not in focus i don't know why that is it's really weird but other than that it works fairly well it's basically like a dropbox 
UI type thing that kind of just sits in the task tray of your your bar somewhere, and that's where it lives. It's fine. Uh, it definitely, it's not again. It's not something that you spend a lot of time in because if you have the desktop client installed, you're basically just putting a mounted folder in your you know your, in your file manager or whatever, and that's where you're going to spend most of your time. Now that's basically what I've done is I have a next cloud full directory in my on my computer and the next cloud desktop client syncs from that directly to the server where I'm running next cloud and that's basically what it does and it's really it works really really well so 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 it turns out that it's okay that I think the UI is bad because I don't spend very much time with that UI but there are some things that will we'll, I'll probably touch on with that web interface here in a few minutes but let's just talk about what I use it for because one of the things you'll find out as you hear things about Nextcloud is that there are a ton of things that you can do. Very, very basically, this is a synchronization service. And that's basically what I've been using it for the most. I have the desktop client, like I said, I have the mobile client and I upload photos, I upload notes, I upload to-do list application or to-do list tasks to Nextcloud and then it can sync across my devices. That's very basically what I use Nextcloud for. And that's basically it. And you would think like, well, Matt, that doesn't sound that impressive at all. Uh, other things can do that. That's true. But I think what I find impressive about it is that it does all of these things and keeps those things organized really, really well. Also, a lot of clients will tie into Nextcloud. So a lot of open source clients specifically, or open source applications specifically rather, have the ability to tie into Nextcloud. Things like QO Notes, Joplin will allow you to do this. One of the applications I talked about in the top five apps called Errands will allow you to synchronize your to-do to -do list with Nextcloud. Many applications have the ability to tie into Nextcloud and then sync their data from your computer to another client, which is really great. So the ability for applications to use this thing is really nice. And it's because it's open source, a lot of open source applications have taken advantage of that. Another thing that I really like is the ability to auto upload all of my photos from my phone. Now, I also use image to do this, but I don't mind having it in two different places. It kind of gives me a backup. So I have both image, which I'll talk about in a future video, probably, and Nextcloud set up so that when I open up applications, it will actually sync my photos from my phone to the server and it will do the different thing will upload the newest ones or whatever while it's open and, and that's how it works right and that basically just allows me to have a backup of the pictures that are on my phone and I can then use those on my computer or I can just use it as a backup or whatever I like that it's automatic and then it works really really well it also will organize them by name, which is also really nice so that you can kind of have some of an organization there if you prefer to have them organized. So you can have it also upload just the photos if you don't want to use videos because videos can obviously take up a lot of space. So you can kind of pick and choose what you want uploaded. And that, again, is very nice to be able to do. So I think that one of the things that I'll and I'll continue coming back to this is that the fact that this does all of these things. So it will do pictures, it will do notes, which I'll talk about more here in a minute. It will do things like to-do applications, you do regular files if you want to synchronize files between different devices, all those things, that's really nice, right? Now, actually, let me go ahead and move into notes because one of the things that you guys have seen me struggle with over the course of the last five years is trying to find an application that does notes well. And I need notes done well. I don't need anything complex. Like I really don't need something like Notes Nook, which has a ton of features. I don't need Evernote. I don't really need something like Obsidian. I need something fairly simple that I can carry around with my phone and then have it synchronized somewhere, like either to another application on my desktop or to the web or whatever. And for years, I've talked about how I've been using Google Keep. And the thing that has kept me on Google Keep is that it's simple. It synchronizes really, really easily. And I don't have to worry about it. It's just something that I can have on basically every device that I own. I can pop it open, create a note, and leave. I don't have to do anything special about it. And I've done that for years, right? But since I've installed Nextcloud, 
what I've been able to do because I've been able to synchronize notes from machine to machine using Nextcloud, I can use Nextcloud Notes, which does have a dedicated app on the iPhone and also on Android. And I can just basically uh, write my notes in uh, Nextcloud Notes. It will synchronize them via Nextcloud, obviously. And then it will go to whatever client I happen to be using on the desktop. Right, lately, I've been using something called IOTAs, which I talked about on the channel not too long ago. And this is just a GTK application. It takes notes just like you'd expect, and it synchronizes with my Nextcloud Notes. It's awesome it's the solution i've been looking for for ages i've moved all of my stuff off google keep i've been here for over a month now so for those of you who think i can't stick with something when it comes to notes i'm proving you wrong yet again uh, <laughs> nana nana boo boo <laughs> but anyways i have been sticking on this for a while and i really love this method of taking notes i can just take them on my phone it synchronizes to the cloud which if i ever need to go to the cloud to use that web interface i can do so all of my notes are there just in markdown format and then and I can also go and use IOTIS, or if I switch away from IOTIS, as long as the, the client that I switch to has Nextcloud functionality, I can take those notes with me. It's one of my, one of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to note-taking applications is a lot of them just save things in weird formats, or they save them in, in you know, in weird order, and, you know, they, they don't organize them properly and you can't take them with you like they're not a lot of times they're not transferable from one place to another sometimes they are sometimes they're not and it's kind of hit or miss with this they're just markdown files they're organized however i organize them in categories or directories or whatever and i if, if i need to move these things to another client i can do so if i want if i no longer want them to synchronize via nextcloud i just take them out of the nextcloud directory they'll no longer be synced that's just it feels like it's given me power over my note-taking solution not and that's something that i haven't had basically ever because I, I moved from evernote back in like the early 2000s or whatever it was like like the mid 2000s i guess while i was at university and uh, actually it wasn't evernote it was one note <clears throat> I hated OneNote so much, I just wiped it from my brain. And then I moved to Google Keep, which is more simple, and I didn't need, after I left the university, I no longer needed the complexity of OneNote. So now I have this setup, and it's much more simple, and it just works really, really well for me, and Nextcloud has enabled that. Now, my usage of Nextcloud is actually fairly simple, because it kind of ends there. I don't use it for basically anything else. But there's so much more there that I could use if I chose to do so. So, for example, there's a talk service. I believe this is a front end for Jitsi. I may be wrong about that. I'm not actually sure. I've never actually used it. I have no real need of doing so because we just use Jitsi. There's another thing in there where it allow you to actually have document editing inside of Nextcloud. So this is provided by something called Calabra, I think, something like that. Uh, I think it's like an online version of LibreOffice. I haven't tried it that much, which is why I don't know the name of it. Um, and it looks awesome. I don't know the features of it, and I, I have been avoiding it because I am jealous of it. I know I won't be able to use it. <laughs> My job requires the use of Google Docs, and that's never going to change unless, like, Google turns it, you know, sets itself on fire or something. So, um, I have to use Google Docs, and I don't want to get, in, you know, entrenched in the online Nextcloud documents scene uh, if I'm not going to be able to use it. I, I, I would just make myself feel bad. So, that's also something that you can do if you want to do that. There are a ton of applications. You'll probably see me scrolling through them on be in b-roll here now there are a ton like i said like innumerable number of applications that you can install to your server and it will allow you to do many 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 different things and that's really the bottom line of nextcloud is that not only are the built-in applications really nice and the ability to synchronize between devices really nice but it also is very very extensible so you there's a, a wide variety of third-party applications that you can install on Nextcloud that allow you to do really cool things. And, and if you don't like Collabora or whatever it's called, there's another document editing software suite that you can install. If you are interested in running your own uh, encrypted messaging server, there's something like that that you can install. It does a ton of different things, uh, and all these applications enable you to expand next cloud's functionality basically however you want and that's what i find really cool about this because despite the fact that my usage of it is still fairly simple 
I see the possibilities for other people who want to have the ability to do more cool things. It's a one-stop, like, online, self-hosted suite of tools that you can use to do basically anything you want online. It competes with, like, Microsoft Word, Google Docs. It competes with, you know, Dropbox and PCloud. You know, it's, it's the open source version of all of those things in one tight, very well designed, very well functional uh, package. And now I know why whenever pe someone tries this thing, they're like, this is open source? That's awesome, right? I've argued this for a long time, that there are some pillars to open source software that when you think open source software, those are the things you think of. OBS is one, Blender is one, kind of Audacity is one. Well. Nextcloud is also another one of those kind of pillars of open source software that you just kind of have to put up there because it it feels like something that could very well go mainstream and that's awesome because it's not something that happens to open source software very often. So uh, this is just a small peek at what I've been doing with Nextcloud. Uh, if you guys are interested in more of this type of content regarding the home server, Nextcloud or whatever, leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. If you haven't already, leave a thumbs up on this video. It really helped the channel. You can follow me on Mastodon and Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Linux cast, just like all of these fine people. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing without you the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now so thank you so very 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 much for your support if you want to support me on patreon like all those people patreon.com slash linux guest like i said i'm also available on ko-fi and on youtube uh, members as well or you can head on over to the shop which is available at shop.linuxcast.org there you'll find all sorts of awesome merch which is just awesome 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 it's very, very good, as you can tell. That's available at shop at linuxcast.org. All the proceeds for from the merch go directly towards helping make me make more Linux content for you guys. So thank you so very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.